Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be covering the topic of single malt and single hop beer, otherwise known as Smash for short. This type of recipe is extremely popular among progressive home brewers and I have to say that I brew a lot of my beers this way when I am trialling ingredients that are new to me. And I believe this is a great way for brewers of all experience levels to experiment, hence this video. I should also add that I enjoy brewing one of these when I simply want something easy yet tasty. So use this as a foundation for your own needs. Now you may be thinking that a beer this simple will be boring, but you could not be further from the truth. Actually the most popular beer styles in the world are based on simplicity, namely lagers and IPA. As a rather well known man once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I have often said, don't knock it until you've tried it. A smash provides a very simple and yet highly drinkable beer that can also provide a gateway to understanding the flavours of a particular hop, malt and also yeast. When planning a smash beer it is best to use just one part of your recipe for your test. The other ingredients should be well known to you so that you can understand the impact of the ingredient on test. As I see it, the very first decision you have to make in planning a smash beer is what beer style are you looking to emulate in its basic form. For my example, I'll be brewing an American Parallel type of style. This will dictate the hop, grain and yeast choice and the BUGU balance of the beer. Do not worry if you do not understand everything I've just said yet, you soon will. The next thing that I should point out is that this only really works for certain beer styles. Here is a brief list. There are probably others, but this will put you on the right train of thought. You will note that these are just lighter styles. Stouts and porters, for example, are completely out, for what I guess are obvious reasons. In terms of malt, smash beers are limited to the following types. This is simply based on a malt's ability to convert starch to sugar. This ability is reduced the darker the grain becomes through kilning, hence why a stout smash is not going to work technically, taste aside. Missing from this list is red X malt and similar for the simple reason that this is a malt blend rather than a single malt. No problem in using these of course, but then it is not really a smash as such. It should also be mentioned that once you have made a smash beer with a certain malt, then there is always room in the future brews of the same recipe to simply add another one for comparison and analysis. Naturally this is no longer a smash beer, but the smash beer design creates an ideal starting point for recipe experimentation and can be used as a great learning tool beginning. The malt that I'm using here is Palau and it is part of a smash recipe that I brewed recently that will form the sample brew for this video as previously mentioned. I have chosen to use 4 kilos of Palau malt because this will provide an in keeping amount of alcohol at 6% with my chosen yeast within the volume of the beer that I'm brewing. Sure, it is on the high side of an APA, but that suits me and quite frankly you should brew to suit yourself as I do. In terms of hops, one of the hops I got from Yakima at the Brow event was a Cryo Citra. This is a hop type that I'm certain many of us have used in the past and understand its effect very well. Do not worry about the Cryo element here. Regular Citra works just great also. In case you are wondering, what makes it Cryo is the fact that these hops are highly concentrated and thus you get more alpha acid percentage, or let's just say bitterness compared to a normal hop. If you decide to use my example smash recipe, which you will find in this video's description on Brewfather Brewing Software Shed Recipes, you will note that I am using a small amount of this hop to gain a high IBU for each addition. It is absolutely vital that you focus on the hops you use with their own individual alpha acid percentage and simply use the amount you need to obtain the target IBU of each addition. Here are the timings that I use for the hop additions during this boil. This is very much a classic Palau schedule. I've also shown the IBU levels on screen that you should match with your own hops if you want to try this smash recipe. This is naturally included in the recipe in the description also. The IBU levels that I've chosen here are based on the style. The important work is to calculate the amount of bitterness that we want appropriate to style. This bitterness is used to offset the alcohol in the beer to create balance. This is known quite simply as BUGU ratio. My regular viewers should be very familiar with this by now, but let me explain quickly. 
In short, the BUGU ratio is your beer's bitterness balanced by your beer's alcohol level. My example has a bitterness of 35 IBU coming from the hops after I made my calculations, and an original gravity of 1.049 coming from the malt, and thus the BUGU ratio is 0.71. This is simply the IBU of 35 divided by 49 the gravity, which in this case gives a ratio of 0.71. Easy stuff. If you search the net for BUGU ratio beer, then you will find handy charts that will make you aware of typical BUGU ratios for each style. You will also find this scale within good brewing software along with typical alcohol percentages also. These days it really could not be easier. For much more information about BUGU ratio, I have a video on my channel that covers this in more detail as shown on screen now. This video talks through the entire process, and if you are new to it, then it is most likely you are going to need the information contained in it. Don't worry, it really is very easy when broken down and explained. Let's now talk about yeast. The usual choice for a smash will be a yeast that is very neutral. This is because if you are evaluating grain or hops or perhaps even other additions, then you will want these to shine through without the interference influence of yeast. In my example I'm using Oslo Kveik, which is a lab isolate of ACOGT Brewery's very special Mega Strain House Kveik mix, which I have and I still actually need to try. This isolated single strain is said to be very clean indeed with a lager-like profile. I've had great past experience of using lager yeast with hoppy styles and I want to see how well this Oslo Kvek isolate does with my first test with it. So in my case the yeast is actually the test component. My great thanks to Bruce for sending me this, you know who you are. So here is my smash recipe in full. You will notice that my chosen yeast has a pretty high attenuation rate with this beer expected to get down as low as 1.003. Hence why I get the potential of 6% out of just 4 kilos or 8.8 pounds of malt. But let's see if it manages this. It is another part of my interest in testing this yeast. If it doesn't then frankly this is still going to be a very nice beer. So really I have nothing to lose the way this one has been planned. Naturally this particular brew is following the basic principles of an APA, but there are plenty of styles to choose from as you now know. If you are unsure about a style then take a look at the BUGU ratio first, then take a look into typical alcohol levels and hop additions used based on timing and the hops themselves. Learning by doing is a great way forward. This really is a great way to experiment, start recipe writing and a gateway to learning about ingredients also as I said earlier. These types of recipes are really easy to put together with basic ingredients, so as such they are perfect for that spontaneous brew that you decide to do 30 minutes before you begin. I've even started mashing some malt before now, before I've actually totally decided on the style I'm going to brew. No problem, you have over an hour to find some hops and yeast and make your own decisions. It is vital to plan, but planning on the go can really enhance your brewing experience. Unlike more narrowed in recipes with multiple types of malt and hops, by brewing a smash beer in the first place, you're on a very safe formula anyway. A great way to use a hop schedule that you know already works with a malt that you've never tried as a base before. You will see many different types of base malts used in IPA and parallels these days for example, so there is plenty to experiment with just there. It should be clear to realise that even when you limit things to a single malt and a single hop, that the combination possibilities are simply huge. If you would like to discuss this further then you can do so in the comments section of this video or head to this channel's Facebook group. No problem in taking part on both of course, there has been some awesome conversations go on in both places. And lastly, you may have noticed these great channel logos that I used in this video. My full appreciation and thanks goes out to Brian at Short Circuited Brewers YouTube channel for designing and providing these to me. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!